conflicts exist on this continent. One of the most ranging conflicts on the continent of Africa is the question of Biafra. From 1965 or before that, the Biafrans had their own institutions. Before the colonial master arrived, they have agitated themselves, they have told the world they want fair treatment in a nation cobbled called Nigeria. Successive regimes have always trampled upon the rights of the people of Biafra. Destroyed them, killed their younger men, assassinated many, deported many, excluded many, forceful deportation out of your own country. Time has come for the new generation in 2020, 2021, 2022, for people to sit down to find a, an everlasting solution to the conflict that is around that region. President Buhari promised us that he will finish in 100 days first term of office, Boko Haram will be dead. Today is finishing his second term. Boko Haram is even more vibrant than his own shoes. We have landed in very serious market waters that the people of Nigeria don't know which direction they are going. The people of Nigeria, a big country with a big population and the economic hub of West Africa and Africa, with the biggest reserves of oil, still lingers in poverty. The poverty and the rich gaps in Nigeria are wider than the distance between, like, than the distance between Mars and us. What can we do for our countries in Africa? How do we unite? For us, our role is to speak, to defend the voiceless, to, dis to chart our way forward, to find a solution. The only way solution can be got on the night, the African issue is a referendum which Buhari and the government present have refused. But sincerely speaking, Nigeria needs rearrangement. If that rearrangement does not come today, tomorrow or the other day, one day it is going to explode. People can be pushed, but they cannot be pushed beyond what Biafrans have been pushed. The suffering is too much. Pictures that I cannot show on this television. I call upon President Uru Kenyatta as a member of the United Nations Security Council to see that some of these problems should be resolved and the resolution is passed of sitting down to understand the difficulties of the nations, especially in Nigeria, in Cameroon, because the problem of, Ni of Biafra is also similar to the problem of Amazonia. The English-speaking people have no say in Cameroon. They are taken as second-class citizens. Biafrans are also taken as second-class citizens in a country called Nigeria. Their problems are compounded with a dictator who has lost direction, who doesn't know where the wind is blowing from, whether east of Sahara or west of Sahara, he's going north when the wind is going north, south. Therefore, he's blown one leg going up, one leg going down. Part. 
Thank you. very much for watching punchline africa television this is matanga africa perspective this show is a show that looks at what is africa what has africa done so far today as you know is a commemoration day for africa day 25th may 1963 the year of our lord Kwame Nkrumah, Haile Selassie, Gabriel Nasa, Sekuture, Nyerere, Obote, Jomo Kenyatta, Ben Bera, Patrice Numumba was gone by then. He had already been killed, but he was very instrumental in behind the scenes to talk about Africa, a united one vision of Africa. Today, in Africa, we commemorate 25th May as the day of the liberation, as the day, the first time that Africa received the sign of hope that there can be an organization, a body that can help Africa to unite, to speak with one voice. Today, as we reflect back to the past, since 1963, we have had quite a lot of challenges. We have changed the African Union. African Union, in the, if you want to join us, African Union has been challenged with obstacles, challenges. Are there any successes that it has made? since its inception. After the formation of African Union in 1963, what followed next was very simple. Military coups, military coup upon military coups took place in Africa. The first coup occurred in 1965 when Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown by his own generals. Then he followed Nigeria, which went into chaos when the war be broke out between Ojuku and Gowan. That war cost millions and millions of people who died. Across Africa, today, they are dotted problems, a litany of difficulties, a litany of conflicts, conflicts that are dotted across the continent. We have a conflict in Libya. We have a conflict in Central African Republic. We have a conflict in Somalia. We have a conflict in Mali. We have a conflict in DRC Congo. We have a conflict in Mozambique. We have a conflict almost in every French-speaking country. Things have not been rosy 
for this continent of Africa. As we, the panel sits down to reflect on the past, what can be done? What steps have we taken as Africans to maintain the status quo of our founding fathers or even to beat them in their status? Have we fallen victims of second, third, and now backdoor diplomacy? Where do we blame many of African people? Do we blame them? Do we blame the colonialists? I want my production team in Nairobi to play a clip that I sent you very early in the morning, Stephen, regarding why we should not be blaming the colonialists. A bit of it. So that my panel, before we start, or when I finish giving the overview, you will play that clip. There's a clip, very important, an African man is asking, when you steal money, like a Buhari, and the bank it across, do you now blame colonialism? When you wage war, pick up arms like a Bozize, do you blame colonialism? When in Mogadishu, you kill people, you plan to plunder, to destroy a country, do you blame colonialism? Those are some of the questions we want to answer this evening. And the viewers, we shall touch, if time allows, on all countries from, from Nigeria, where Nigeria is dismantling, is fragmented. Rule of law has broken down. Killings, murder, rape, defilement, torture of opponents is the thing of the day. We shall cross over to Cameroon, where the Amazonians have struggled for freedom, freedom to exist, freedom to breathe, freedom to eat, freedom to pray, freedom to speak English, not French. They have been forced to speak French. We have struggled, Central African Republic, we have struggled in Somalia. We have struggled in Libya. We see General Khalifa Haftar in Libya with his army, supported by France, logistically supplied by France, equipped by France, has managed to divide Libya into two countries. You can see the danger of backdoor di di democracy and diplomacy. It is therefore very important that as we sit, as we talk, let Africa understand there are people who feel for this continent and those people are us. My panel today is full of knowledge full of Africa. I'll start introducing my panel, Dr. Joseph Nyachama. Dr. Joseph Nyachama is a Kenyan. He teaches good manners. That's all I can say. <laughs> good manners, behavior. He studied humanity. Human beings, how do you behave? He's a motivational speaker himself. He gives lectures. Welcome to the show, Dr. Nyacham. Thank you, Dr. Ari and my fellow panelists. Good evening. And the other listeners, wherever you are listening us from, welcome to Punchland Africa. Thank you. In the studio also on our chat, we have Mr. Mosti Fever Onogibo, a Biafran, best in the Netherlands. He's our guest tonight. 
he wants to say what ails in Nigeria. Do we have a president or we have a dead man who is in office? Most uh, favor, most favor of no Gibo, chief, you tell us about today. Test the microphone, sir. Thank you, thank you, Doctor. Good evening from here, our listeners and viewers all over the world. My name is Most Favor Onibo, and uh, I'm a Biafran. And thank you for joining joining the program. And uh, to God Almighty bless us all. Thank you. Thank you. Back today in Nairobi, we have Professor Jared Onyari, a conflict resolution expert a champion of the church, a man himself who says it as it is, he knows, he looks at the conflicts in Africa. Are we to blame colonialists after 66, 66 years of independence? Sure, when we still, should we blame colonialists? Professor Gerard Onyale, just the microphone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Masanga, my fellow panelists and our viewers, wherever they are, be it their morning, afternoon, or evening. Thank you, bud. Back again in Nairobi, we have, don't forget, this show is Masanga, Africa, Perspective. Enjoy. Sit and relax. Get a pen. There is a lot to be. If you ask the people who was the people will go under Google. But when you come on this show, be prepared. I will pick on you and ask a question. Tawesh or the Sisana Samuel from Narok in Kenya. Who was the king overthrown by Gaddafi? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. David Masanga, my colleague uh, panelist, and indeed everyone who is watching. It is my great pleasure to join you tonight, um, morning or evening, depending uh, with where you are tuned in, actually to make a contribution about this very auspicious day when Africa is celebrating its big day today, the Africa Day. Thank you so much, Dr. Masanga. You have not answered my question, but let me help you is King Idris. Idris. Some people have Googled, but I don't Google. For me, all the things are here. <laughs> I teach that subject. How can I Google? I know the first prime minister of Nigeria was Baba Tafa Balewa. I know the assassinated guy. You know General Aronzi. You know all these generals. I know them by physical appearance. So, thank you very much. So, when you're on this show, be prepared for choker, shocker. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Tawish. Joining us from Meru, the son of God, son of man, the demolisher of Somalia. A man who does not like Farimajo by one Ayot. None other Douglas Kirimi, Kirimi. The guy himself speaks. Douglas Kimi. How are you? Uh, good evening, uh, Dr. Masanga, and happy African Day to you as a foremost uh, Pan-Africanist and also to Professor Jared Donyari and uh, Jevan Karanja, Dr. Nyanchama, and my co-panelist. This is uh, uh, one of commemorative days that Africa is being wished a happy day, but I'm not happy as an African. Thank you. Last, last but not least, I want to bring the money from the plains of Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya, Kenya, Nanyuki, Javani Karanja, a veteran journalist, sitting in the plains of Nanyuki, where maize, where the food, the land of food of Canaan, where everything grows without you putting fertilizers in Nanyuki. Javani Karanja, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Dr. David Masanga. I'm happy to be here on Punchline Africa TV this morning as we celebrate uh, the Africaness in us. 
and uh, thanks for having me on the show and a good evening to my fellow panelists. It's always a pressure showing up on Punchline Africa TV and to our viewers, relax, a lot to learn from this show. Thank you. Thank you very much. And unfortunately, we don't, we don't have ladies, so don't blame us. Some of the ladies are, are busy cooking and are preparing some uh, areas for tomorrow's children, but they will join us. Thank you very much. Let me, as I said, listen to this clip. I don't know whether Stephen has seen it. It was one of the first clips that I sent, but if you haven't seen it, let me just send it again so that you can see this gentleman is explaining that it is ourselves. It is ourselves. But before I do that, I want to tell people who want to join to punch in the Zoom number. The Zoom number is on the flyer. And uh, one lady is asking, the Zoom number is on the flyer. Look at the Zoom number on the flyer in, 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 if you have Zoom on your phone, in blue letters, there is the Zoom number. You can join us wherever you want. Don't, don't give that excuse that how do you join, surely. I, I don't think so. That, that thing is very self-explanatory. So thank you very much. Let me take this opportunity to introduce, I don't know whether that is, Stephen has got that, uh, Even that is that one, that one there. So thank you very much. As the tape is being arranged to play, a lot of Africans and a lot of people in the world think that Africa is the best place that can make us be happy generations and generations to come. But first, before I go, let me, before we start, let's play the tape. And Mr. Our guest tonight, you will tell us your experience from as a Biafra. We shall start with you, then I come to the people of the home yard or the home back, backyard. Our guest most favor from Nugibo. Please be ready after this clip. The clip okay. is playing. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thomas Sankara in 1987, he was still eliminated by Bless Kampauri. You come to Central Africa Republic, there's David Daku. David Daku was to change the nation in another dimension, but a man called Bukasa was used to eliminate him. You go down to Congo Brazzaville, there's this guy called Maron Ngwabi. Ngwabi also was eliminated through a coup d'etat. Now, if you go down to Guinea Equatorial, yeah, there was this guy called uh, Masias Ngema. It was his own cousin. Obiangema Basoko that was used to eliminate him. You go down to Ghana, Osage from Kwame Kruma had a good intention for the nation. It was Kotoko, his own name, clan night neighbor, that eliminated him. You go to Nigeria, the guys of Nambia Zikiwe, they were eliminated by poor close to them. Now, if you put it in a nutshell, you go to a Mozambique, Samura Moise Machel, it was his close partner that eliminated him. The West, and I repeat, will never and ever have access to Africa until they use africans that's why i say what is eating the bean seed is within the bean seed africans are full with greed full with ethnocracy tribalism and nepotism and if nothing is done we will keep on killing our best every year as i talked to you recently i would guarantee you all shorty that this guy magufuli has convinced us against once more that africa does not need any support out of the country lazarus taquera in his eight minute speech commemorating the death of magufuli he said the unpredictable magufuli 
They did not know that leadership could run in Africa without money being borrowed from International Monetary Fund because they did not know Magufuli was coming. They did not know that projects could be set up and executed on time because they did not know Magufuli was coming. They did not know that somebody could not pay attention to International Assembly, General Assembly of the United Nations. They didn't know Magufuli was coming. African presidents have given us the impression that you must borrow to succeed. Before Magufuli came to power, most of the mines in Tanzania were privatized. But what he did was that he came back and then sanctioned the foreign companies that were mining in Tanzania until 16% of those particular mines were given back as ownership back to Tanzania. A scenario occurred in Zambia. Zambia is the best producer of copper. You have the copper belt in Zambia. Zambia sold that copper belt to an American firm up front without payment. That they will exploit the copper and pay them later. American firm came, took that particular copper belt, turned it within two years and paid the money up front. And is giving Zambia a 0.00 something percent as royalty for their mine. Was that colonialism? It is talking about stupidity and poor management. Who brought gun to give that, that, that copper belt to America? Nobody brought gun. When last did you see Europeans using prestation, assimilation, or indirect in Africa? It's no longer there. Let us consider the fact that they are taking a greater chunk of our resources. The balance we have here is very possible for us to manage those things. How can a man come in five years' time without borrowing a dime from International Monetary Fund a dime from World Bank, he was able to restore six aircraft into the Tanzania airline. He was able to build bridges, build railway, restore back the Julius Nera hydroelectricity project that could give Tanzania 99% guarantee of electricity throughout the year without borrowing a dime. China proposed to borrow him 10 billion to reconstruct and expand the poor in Dar es Salaam. He refused. Yet the poor was under extension. Where did he get the money? That's what we are talking about. A man that came and gave free education to all government schools in Tanzania. Mr. Liu, 20,000 ghost workers were discovered. That's where our money is going to. That's not colonialism. He also arrested 14,000 unqualified workers in the government. Those 34,000 persons who were earning salary they did not marry is what was melting down the economy. It was not a colonial master. I think if we go down to most African countries, there are people who are earning salaries that do not exist in the government. Where is colonialism in all these things I have, I have outlined? A nice way of fighting moral decadence. Who are we going to blame? Where did he get the money? Money he came and saw the hospital. President that goes down to the hospital. Beds were scattered, rotting, patients were sleeping on the floor. He fired the entire American staff and gave them one month to repair all the beds in Tanzania. And suddenly from nowhere, the beds were repaired in the space of two months. Okay. Thank you very much, viewers. That was a gentleman who said you all had you blame colonialism surely for selling a copper mine then after three days it produces more money than what you sold for refusing listen the uganda bought an airline erupted and the president museveni sacked the board the management all of them. Do you blame colonialists? Let's come to, I am not on the side of colonials. I'm now wanting to find, have we achieved our dream? When you look at Nigeria, look at Cameroon, Central African Republic, has African Union, Organization of African Unity, as it was called that time, achieved the dream. Mr. Motifa, most in favor of Nigo, take it away for us, All right. the perspective of Nigeria. 
Okay, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for uh, our viewers and listeners. My name is Most Favor. Yes, uh, in my own contribution to this very wonderful program, I must start with because in African, in African way, when you have a, a problem, you always, if you want to find a solution of any problem, you have to go to the root cause of the problem. You can't just treat a problem from surface. You have to go to the root cause. And in my own perspective of this Africa, the African will dream, the African we wish to have, we've not attained, we Africans, we have not attained 10% of our expectation as a human, as a black, as African. And in my own view, the problem of Africa lies from the very structural beginning of this very continent as carved by white man. Why do I say that? Africans, we are tribal. Over here in Europe, believe in me, over here in Europe, countries are created based on ethnic lines. But in Africans, countries we are formed in Africa by cohesion, not by ethnic lines. That is why here in Europe, that is why here in Europe, a country, let me even start with Malta. A country, a, a, a Malta is a country here in Europe, is about 460,000 people. It's an independent country, 460,000. So many of them losing both one of the finest country here in Europe. Luxembourg is about 600,000 people. Estonia is 1.3 million people. They build European, they build or they created their country based on their ethnic lines, not by, not by, uh, uh, not just forcing people together. What defines their people is their ethnic life. And when they are caught or ethnicity, they have the same mentality, the same ideology, the same political ideology and philosophy. Then they can move forward. But in Africa, the problem of Africa is this. Africa, people of different culture, different ideology, different beliefs are merged to be one country. Case study of Nigeria and also so many other, I, I know I know not only Nigeria, even Cameroon, rest of African countries is not organic. African countries are not organic creation. I'm not saying that Africans sh should be a separate, separate entities, but we can first go back to our region or to our identity, our original being, before we can now agree to, to have a pan-African mindset study of Nigeria. Nigeria is a country today of over 200 million people. But do you know that 27 European Union countries, 27 EU country, total of them is 447 million. That is 27 independent countries here in Europe. But one entity they created back there in Africa, and they called it Nigeria, is 200 million. How can you solve this equation? Not that these 200 million, they have one ideology. Not that these 200 million people are one are of one ethnicity. That is why today in Nigeria, case study of Nigeria, Yoruba is a tribe in Nigeria. Half of Yoruba is in Togo. And the, that one, they said they are Togolese. They create them to be, they don't divide, they divide families take half to this place, take another half to here. Half of Yoruba is in, in Togo. Even a greater part of Biafrans also are in Cameroon. So the problem of Africa have to start from the, the foundation, which is the, 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 the European interest in Africa. So now when we are out from the structural problem of Africa, which is the, the creation, artificial creation of boundaries, now, the, another problem is we, the Africans. But once the structure is faulty, when a foundation is faulty, the entire building is bound to be wrong, is bound to be faulty. Our, our politicians are being able to look as they want because there is no checks and balance, nobody to checkmate them. What can ordinary Africans do? The people we are looking at to sanction them are still the same people that created us, they are the people to sanction these people. And for the, in, for the fact, or based on the interest they have, they cannot sanction those people. 
another case of Nigeria is that, the, in fact, eighty percent of Nigerian politicians their stolen fund are sto are banked in America and 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 Europe. So how do you solve this? Because the the people to sanction Nigeria are the one are, are the safe a safe zone or where they run to to hide what they've looted from the people. So the problem of Africa must like I keep saying for Nigeria, more especially for my Biafran, we have to start. Uh, uh, Nigeria has never been great. What Africans are, what white Africans are seeing that today, that is Mohammed Buhari that that brought Nigeria to the mud. He did, but from the inception of Nigeria, it has never been great. A country that fought civil war barely six years after its creation. When, when, just when in history has, can someone tell me that at this point in history that Nigeria was great? It has never been great. Just that now it's so obvious for the world to see that this, con this thing is not working. And it's about time to, to disengage this struggle, this, this amalgamation is a bad time because how can you say we are great? In 1965, uh, Singapore got their own independence five years after Nigeria. And Singapore and Malaysia, they were one country before now. They were one country, but in 1965, Singapore parted their way to be a different independent nation. Singapore is not Europe, it's not America, it's Asia. But okay. today, Singapore, they've attained their potential in life. Singapore has the best road network in the whole world. After Singapore is Switzerland, before you talk of Netherlands here. Yes. So they've attained their potential. As of 2020, Singapore passport ranking was number one in the world. This is a country that is just, uh, Nigeria is, is very much older than this Singapore. Nigeria got independent in 1960. So how and when? Did we attend that very potential? So we, I will conclude by saying this: that about time the rest of Africa come into the case of Nigeria, not that to come and fight our fight, but to help and keep shouting because the only way forward is the the the, the disintegration of that very entity is too. White man cannot even come and run that place. It's too much. It's too big. It can't compare us with Americans. They are not okay. the same. We are not the same. Our ideology is not the same. I will, I will, I will stop here so others can come in. Thank you for giving me the time. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mosifeva Onugibo. Yes. Mosifeva Onugibo. Onugibo, yes. Thank you. Onugibo. <laughs> I will try it and I will tell you. So, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank the you. panel viewers, the panel, and I, I welcome Ambassador Ghana Amaina. A man who departs when his brother needs help at the last minute, but arrives back to, check it, to, to come and see like Okonko. Perhaps, Ambassador Ghana Maina, you have been away for too long. Things in Omofia seem to have changed. Obierika was telling Okonko. I am now telling Ambassador Ghana Maina, you disappeared. You have redirected. Welcome to the show, Ambassador Guy Namaina. Thank you, Dr. Samatanga. I'm seeing my friend is start to look tired, the Professor Onyari. Yeah, I you are always coming with... in for Onyari. Uh, he was waiting am... for you, but welcome yeah, to the you. show. Thank you, Dr. You have listened so... to our brother from Nigeria. I'll give thank you a chance. And I will bring Professor, Professor, unmute your phone. Professor, unmute your phone. Yes. I'm telling my Ambassador Minor that uh, today we are celebrating African Day. If they say nothing, we celebrate. I'm not going to hammer you, although you have been uh, under hibernation. We thank yes, God thank you have been selected. This is the death of Idris Dabri. He disappeared, and I think he will. I hope he's not one of those. So, but I don't want to say it here, but I will say it quietly. But thank you very much, Gaina, my ambassador. Thank you from Paris. We want to listen to you at a certain moment. Let me go back to the queue. Joseph Nachama, Dr. Joseph Nachama. Thank you, so, Dr. Masai. You, your views, my friend in, um, from Biafra has said, as I said, Nigeria was six years old, 
a military coup came in place. The problem is he blames, he hinges it back. People, some Yorubas, Yoruba people are in Togo. Some Yoruba people are in Nigeria. Some Bagisu people are in Kenya. Some Bagisu people are originally in Uganda. Some Rwandese are in Kenya, are in, in Uganda. Some Rwandese are across the bridge in Rwanda. So he says the problem must have been the colonial boundaries and the colonialism that was brought. What do you say? Have we achieved the dream up to now? What dream is there if there is any? Thank you, Dr. Masanga and my fellow panelists, wherever you are at this particular minute. Let me pick a cue from where he left. Indeed, let me say this first of all. You know, slavery destroyed Africa and religion divided Africa. That means us. Ignorance controls us. Amazing thing is that truth scares us. Truth scares us. We, we don't want to be truthful. We're always scared and uh, continue to gos worship um, mediocre people. You know, if you find somebody running and they start chasing after him, you may think he's running into a destiny only to discover that he's running, is actually suffering from a running stomach. And that is uh, the problem we have. <laughs> Dr. Masanga, <laughs> Dr. Masanga, there are the leaders we follow and they think that they are taking us to a greater destination only to discover they are, run, they are suffering from a running stomach, problem number one. Number two, Dr. Masanga, this is now statistics. This is not ideological, this is empirical. Dr. Masanga, do you know that Africa, three times China, we repeat in Africa, Africa has 30.6 million square kilometers. China has 9.6 million square kilometers. Africa has 60% 60% of the arable land in the whole world. But it is being fed like a child who stole the dream of Africa. What is the problem? 90% of the real materials are found in Africa. What is the problem? The problem for me, Dr. is leadership. The last speaker talked about Singapore. Let me share with my fellow panelists. Singapore, Dr. Masango already developed on the three pillars and they used to call them MPH. MPH only, meritocracy, pragmatism and the honesty and they used to believe and they believed this way it doesn't matter whether the cat is black or white so long as it can catch the mice that cat is good but what happens in africa nepotism and the tribalism that you want to give people work who cannot produce. And most African leaders who are in fact destroying Africa, they, con they confuse motion with the progress. I think among, my, among the panelists, those who did physics, you understand there is a difference between motion and the progress. We never move. We are simply rotating but sweating you know you can rotate until you sweat but you have done zero work that is why 
Africa is being fed because we do not work. We focus ourselves on erections in an unproductive part. And we think now, working. look at the countries when they go in erections, they continue fighting, conflict after conflict. Youth are not given conducive environment to work. Dr. Masanga, where do you expect the result to come from? Singapore, they used to believe you do not equalize the result, you only equalize opportunities because people have diverse talents. For now, Dr. Tari, because we're many, I submit. Thank you very much. On that point, MPH. Meritocracy. 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 Pragmatism. And honesty. Yes. Metro you repeat them for people to hear. Meritocracy. Pragmatism. Pragmatism and, and honesty. honesty. They believed on, they, they developed only on those key pillars. Yes, that's why the prime minister there assassinated, shot on firing squad, his own friends. Do you know why Singapore has, today you can't touch a penny in Singapore. His own friends, he put them to jail for life. Some were shot, assassinated for having been corrupt. That's why the honesty in Singapore is taken. Even if you leave a bag on a train, you come back, the conductor will tell you, why don't we are sweeping this train, we found this bag. MPH, learn something new on this panel. Thank you very much, Prof. Onyari, cut it quickly for us. Mm. You have had the two the gentlemen from Biafra. Yeah. Yes. You have yeah. got the, a thing. gentleman from Kenya. Thank you. The gentleman from Biafra says it is, we have, we, we, the problem originates from colonialism. The Kenya man says we have bad leadership. Now, what do you say? Then I come to Douglas Creamy. Then I go to Tawish or Sasana, and then Karanja. Then I come to Gaina Maina. This is what I have to say, Dr. Masanga, that the happy African day. But I again, I ask myself a question. Is there anything to be happy about? Why was Africa day brought into action. It was to celebrate and acknowledge the successes of the organization of African unit. What was the successes of the African unit, Dr. Masanga? These guys, <clears throat> those founding fathers of the likes of Kwame Nkrumah, Amda Skiwe, Kenneth Kaunda, Mwarim Julius Nyerere, Milito Neopote, Jomo Kenyatta, and many more, because time will fail me to name all of them. It is as all of them were committed, Dr. Masanga, to see that Africa is free. They were committed towards ensuring there is independence in Africa. Sometimes now we reach into a point, Dr. Masanga, and we start uh, saying uh, the kind of the problem facing the continent of Africa. Do we have an agenda? The guys who we are discussing here, are we doing an academic exercise? To the African leaders, the African people, we keep on talk. We keep on talking about our leaders. Fine. The easiest thing for any fool to do is to criticize, to critique, but to give solution, Doctor Masanga. I don't see anyone who's trying to give a solution. Perhaps you you are giving us an an opportunity, a forum to vent our anger, which is a good thing. May God bless you for that. So we do not have an agenda. And sometimes, Dr. Masanga, sometimes you, you astonish me. 
the continent of Africa, if we look at the continent of Africa, Dr. Masanga is the only continent, Dr. Masanga, where we have not used another race as slaves, as cheap rapper. People have taken us as slaves. Who are, we are the ones who developed Asia. We developed Europe. We developed America. And if anyone is disputing, let me just come on board, I tackle him. When these people came to Africa with all the kind through the Paris Conference of 1884-85, they decided to partition Africa as if it was their cake. And they see the kind of the massive uh, infrastructure they did. You think Dr. Masanga, someone who was building the railway from, uh, from Mombasa to Entebbe to Kampara, was someone who was interested in moving away from Africa? No. So the independence of Africa, Dr. Masanga, they gave it reluctantly. Because when we said where the, where this Muthungu came from, we said you must go back. They gave it they gave it reluctantly. And then what they started doing, Dr. Masanga, they started overthrowing us, and we have been taken hostage up to now. So the, ne the next way forward, Dr. Masanga, do we keep on agonizing? It is true, Dr. Masanga, Africa have been used as slaves. It is true. We have been used as cheap labor, Dr. Masanga. It is true our resources have been taken, Dr. Masanga. Is that enough? Time for us, Dr. Masanga, to start organizing, to tell, to put an agenda on the table and put the destiny for this, con this continent going forward, Dr. Masanga. Do you want to blame Dr. Masanga? The dispute which is going on between Egypt and Sudan, you want to blame the colonies, the colonial people? That's why I agree with you. When you say after six, Six years, we keep on praying with the Wasungu. We must, we must be able to examine ourselves. The Kenya, the dispute between Kenya and the Somalia, where we have coexisted for all many years. The military government, this and in judge, they killed their president and the minor must come here and tell us what happened. You want to blame it on the whites? Maris joined civilian military, Dr. Masanga, which happened last year, Dr. Masanga. You want to blame them on the whites? The Mozambique Islamist insurgency, Dr. Masanga, know the uh, Cabo de Gado. You want to blame it on, on, on the West? Dr. Masanga, time has come for us to sit down, Dr. Masanga, and address this. We must be able to address accountability. When we are asking accountability from our leaders, are we accountable? When it comes to an election, which we know says, is there, need, is there really need for us to have an election in, in, in Africa? Are we accountable? Dr. Masanga, are we transparent ourselves before we go to our leaders? Do we respect human rights? So Dr. Masanga, the African people, as we are celebrating, we must be able to put our agenda, like the founding fathers of the continent of Africa. They were so much determined, Musungu, Aende, Uraya, Muafrika, Apatouyu, period. We must have a current call. We must, Dr. Masanga, rise up and protect the continent of Africa. You know, you, I, I have traveled and you know, you travel and Maina is living in Paris and he thinks he's considered as a human being. Those people see you as a monkey. So the African people, we must come forward what? and set an agenda for the continent of Africa. We must be able to know where we have come from, where we are and where we are going. People, the Bible say the people perish because of lack of vision. Dr. Masanga, then the panelists who are here challenge me where the vision they are for Africa. Perhaps you have a, you have a vision for us to talk about Pan African. See, <laughs> then when he says that, he tells me that Dr. Masanga, they say the stone which starts rolling continue gathering momentum. Do we have any momentum? I was speaking to the young people a while ago. Where do we around the continent, Dr. Masanga, with 1.2 billion people? That is 1.2 billion. Every voice in Africa must matter. Every voice in Africa must give a solution, Dr. Masanga. We must move this channel together. Yes. Dr. Masanga, we must be able to protect the resources of Africa. Thank you. We must be able to tell the West and all African brothers that we are all children of God. We are not children of a rest of God. Dr. Masanga, we must protect Africa. Sometimes I get emotional on how these people use the color of the skin. 
not the content of their character they want to tell us that we are there to be seen africa will rise again let us leave the ideas of the founding fathers of this nation when someone tells you that the people decide that the brothers and the that others have to live in Togo, others and to live in nigeria just you what you know you will need, you scatter them so that you can be able to rule them why should we sit here dr masanga to watch when nigeria is, is failing is failing as a state africa has what has what work to do for the interest of other panelists africa has what work to be done and that work must be done with us yes. time for us to continue organizing that this happened for the continent of africa should be gone let us try to organize Thank ourselves you. in a small way i conclude Thank by you. using the famous work of Professor Wangari Madai, when she was receiving a Nobel Prize, she said the forest was burning. And all the big animals, the elephant, the giraffe, the buffalo, name them Dr. Masanga, they came out of the forest and they were watching what is happening. But the small arming bird was going to the river to get some water to come and put off the fire. He, of course, he did not put off the fire, Dr. Masanga. We are the hummingbird. At least we are doing something for the continent of Africa. We cannot watch the Chinese coming and take all our resources. We cannot rest when Zimbabwe is under sanctions because someone has to decide who tells people that the solution must come from the West. We must rise up when God is with us. They have done all other things, Dr. Masanga, but still we are standing tall in the continent of Africa. Let us protect Africa. Let us celebrate this African day as we look forward. I submit Dr. Masanga. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. You have given inspiring the forest. The hummingbird went back to collect water. How much is that water? <laughs> when you try something in Africa, first you are shot down or you are even assassinated before you try maina has an example of idris dabi he was a revolutionary to some extent yeah, we he with imperialists <laughs> but they came and threw him out they killed him patrice Lumumba. let's look at all the people assassinated samora Machia. All, all of them who have gone to Mondelani, people who have been sent letter bombs in their doors to kill them because they have only asked you for freedom. Mm. Do we remember this? Let me come to Douglas Kirimi. My brother, you have a dream. Do you have a dream? Is that dream alive? Where is it? Is Africa moving in the right direction? When you see Biafra, when you see the young men in Biafra being killed, tortured, tied on Land Rovers on, of the military, driven around the villages of Onita, Enuku, Albara, all those states, Port Harcourt, the Southeast, the army of Nigeria turns and the security agencies turn on Nigerians themselves instead of protecting them, but killing them. Do you see an Africa? Do you have a dream? If Baba Tafa Balewa rose up from there today. Hi, afternoon, yes, um, I was a bit surprised too. Um, Where would he say? What do you do is say? What do you do is see if Nkrumah Walker today, if Obote woke up, Jomo Kenyatta woke up in Kenya, what would he say? What state did I leave behind? If Gaddafi woke up, Mama Gaddafi woke up from anywhere God brings him back, what state will he say that? Libya is in. Is Africa? Do we have a dream?
thank you, thank you, Dr. Masanga, and um, my fellow panelists, and also our viewers across the world. Uh, Dr. Masanga, Africa is a dream, but we have a huge problem in Africa. We have a huge problem starting with leaders that have overstayed in power and who continue fueling the powers that be, the resource grid, the Western allies, especially France, especially Britain, especially Americas, and especially some European countries like uh, uh, Norway and Netherlands and others. When you see the true picture of what Africa is, is greed for power and greed for more. You cannot grow Africa, you cannot get Africa to where you want it to be. You cannot let an African youth based in Nairobi to compete with a youth in Juba, Sudan, when their leaders are stealing with reckless abandon and investing that money in Nairobi and other African foreign, uh, foreign capitals and also other um, overseas and abroad um, for, um, uh, capitals. You cannot have an Africa that is going to grow when these people continue stealing. Leaders in South Sudan, instead of finding solution to the problems that bedevil the people of South Sudan, continue stealing and hiding money in Nairobi's Porsche states. In Nyari, they have overtaken everyone. In Karen, they have overtaken everyone. The car that is the most expensive car today is owned by a um, South Sudanese uh, uh, politicians son in, in the streets of Nairobi. Where do they get this money? Their country is at turmoil. Children cannot go to school. Women cannot go to work. They cannot go to work on their farms. They cannot work on their, on, on their livestock. They cannot do anything in South Sudan. Whereas we have a future that we can be able to compete with the, with the, with the, with the youth in South Sudan, with the young people, the younger generation in South Sudan, children of Yek Mashal, and others who belong to the political elite and also the president himself, Salva Kiel, continue roaming African capitals with reckless abandon, with monies that were meant to develop and also put infrastructure in, in South Sudan to help people grow and also help young people to compete competitively with other African youths and also youth from other countries. When we go to Somalia to the man that I, I abhor, a man that I don't want anything to do with Mohamed Faramajo, he continues giving threats to the people of Kenya and the young people in the Kenya telling us we cannot invest in Sudan, where he is in Ravington, here in Ravington, in Nairobi city. We cannot have that those kind of vendors in Africa. The core problem that we have in Africa is our leaders. It is not the people of Africa. In as much as the people of Africa would want borderless Africa, in as much as, uh, as we would want to have a free Somalia, where Somalia can be able to, uh, um, to, to interact with us, the people of Kenya and, and, and East Africa, we are having a huge problem with the people like Mohamed Faramajo, who continue rocking Vira Somalia, who continue living in state house in, in, in Mogadishu today, a man that has been funding terrorists in Nairobi, a terrorist that has been gunned down, we suspect he has been gunned, gunned down by America, in our own soil, a man who has been moving around in the name of an investor, being funded directly by Mohamed Faramajo. We cannot grow Africa, Dr. Masanga, as we continue holding these thieves in office, holding these people continue extending their power in office like Mohamed Faramajo has done in Somalia. We cannot grow Africa competitively and compete with other African youths and all. Also, people from outside the world, Dr. Masanga, when in people in South uh, in, in Cameroon, in Southern Cameroon, people in Amazonia today continue suffering under the evil hand of uh, Paul Beer, President Paul Beer. The Amazonians today, who are next uh, from their own land in, in, in six states to be combined to join the Republic du Cameroon, today continue suffering under the evil hand. In Kumba today, children cannot go to school. Today in Kumba, women cannot go to their farms because the evil hand of Paul Bia, aided by France, continue terrorizing the residents of that country. How is a youth going to compete with me in Nairobi where I have all the opportunities that I can get when a government is supporting us? In Southern Cameroon, in Amazonia, they are not supported by anyone. How is a young people from, from, from uh, uh, Biafra going to compete with me competitively when their government, led by the despot uh, Muhammad Gwari, going to compete with me in Nairobi when I have all the access to the world technology with the best education when young people there, when they talk about having a, a, a free Biafra, a borderless Biafra, Muhammad Gwari continues killing the future of young people, continues steering with reckless abandon, continues steering together with his wife and children, continues steering even with his enrollment. The other day it was in the newspapers in Nigeria. Dr. Masanga, we cannot continue having a future where we can be able to compete competitively when conflicts continue ravaging the, the spirit of Africans. 
Dr. Masanga, we cannot continue the same way when Central Africa Republic uh, uh, General Museveni continues holding a forte in Central Africa Republic because of their resources. We cannot continue the way we are today when a majority of people in DRC Congo today they are not banked. They are unbanked. They have not gone to school. They don't know what is development. We are even told by a report that you tabled the other day that General Museven of Uganda is tarmacking roads in DRC. What kind of an Africa is that? Am I going to compete with those youths really in the future that is coming, in the dream that we are talking about, the African dream? Tonight, I'm not a happy man. Nobody can wish me a competitive or a good, depressing, happy African day when youths in Morocco continue terrorizing, being used by the Kingdom of Morocco to terrorize the young people of Western Sahara. The Kingdom of the, the, the Sahrawi Republic, Arab Republic continues being terrorized by the evil hand of the Morocco Kingdom, uh, Dr. Masanga. We are not Africa, we cannot be able to compete competitively with the outside world or, or have a common dream, have a borderless Africa. If we continue having these despots in power, these people who continue roaming around the leadership scape in Africa, for us to be able to move forward, Dr. Masanga, as I submit, we need to change the future of our leadership. We need to change the, 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 the models of Parandi on how we, we store our leaders and how we protect them in power. People like Mohamed Faramajo should not offer themselves for leadership in this Africa. People like General Museven of Uganda should serve their time and go home completely. People like Paul Bia of Cameroon and others, Dennis Sosu um, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, um, the Congo Republic. This is a man who has continued staying in power. People in Guinea, where Mbwema continues uh, roaming uh, and, and in that country. Eadema of Togo continue holding that country hostage and the future of those uh, young people who are supposed to compete with me in Nairobi where I have the best opportunities and access to education and access to internet. And in Thank you very much. And access to internet. You have made your points. You made your... It, these are serious points. Let me quickly, I think Ambassador uh, Tawish, can we bring in Ambassador Maina? Ambassador Ghana Maina. You, Today I'm a good listener, Dr. Mat. I want to hear your views because Thank we are provoked. Uh, okay. We, have, we are waiting to hear your views. You disappeared. Chad has lost the president. Mali, the president came back from Paris. They were arrested and put in jail. All of them. Three, the minister, the prime minister, minister of defense, prime minister, and the president. What? You, are, you speak French. You are from Chad. You are a diplomat of highest quality around the world. What is going on? Do you have a dream for Africa? Dr. Masanga, thank you for this uh, opportunity. I'm going to be, give you my clear view, first of all, uh, on Africa's issues. We see, uh, we spend uh, six years of always blaming and complaining. Blaming, you know, we are always, we, we cry as a victim. We are claiming these victims. Every time we say that we are victims, things are not working. My question to the panel, who is going to change this Africa then? because we always come together we complain and we go home we sleep tomorrow we come back we wake up we complain are we building a, a continental complaint agreement or do we try to bring something that we can change our lives because there is a say dr masanga they say those who want to live have to fight and those do not want to live in this world for eternal struggle do not deserve to live do you know that in this life nothing has going to be given on the golden plate either we like it or not that is the that is the that is the war that is the system the same life animal are living in the bush in the jungle when you wake up early morning the gazelle have to run faster than the lion either one the lion will eat the gazelle the same thing applied to us human beings but we don't want to agree on that dr matsanga we are gazelle either we run faster we outrun them either they eat us now, if you want to be the lion, build a new strategy then. 
this is the problem. We have talked this thing a lot of time, many times that Africa is not moving. If you're asking me, we don't just have leadership problem in Africa, Dr. Matsanga. We have the transformation of mind. Our mind are not moving. You can take the man out of the ghetto, but if you don't take the ghetto out of his head, he will remain wherever he is, Dr. Matsanga. Let us agree that things are not moving because our mind is not seeing bigger. One of our colleagues, they said uh, Singapore uh, in 30 years become one of the world's first countries because the leaders has transformed their mind and decide to be the best. Have we decided to be the best in Africa? Everything you are seeing, colonization, whatever, oppression, because we are assuming we always think that is there. That's why we is there. Anything you want to do, you are free to do it, Dr. Masanga, but depend what consequences you are ready to pay. What is the price you are ready to pay to get it? But are we ready? My question, are we ready? You are saying about the leaders who has been assassinated or whatever in uh, or those countries. You know, sometimes, Dr. Masanga, you we always saying eh? everything have a time but when the time comes either you like it or not you will you will follow you will follow the change change will come either with an easiest way or the harsh way change will come dr matsanga we all agree that now are we intelligent enough to embrace the change and to make sure that we can go with it nelson mandela has given us an example after spending all his struggle when they get the independence he said i just need one thing Time. and he give back the power and he 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 was happy person why another leaders cannot do that dr masanga those are the simple things it's really we are celebrating today is an african day but let us also see the other side we have made big progress in africa dr masanga let us recognize that we have made a big progress there is no any european country who have 60 years old as better than africa today no they have 300, 400 years, Dr. Matsanga. Let us wake up. We have to also agree where we are doing right. We have to also appreciate. You have to congratulate ourselves also for the areas we are doing right. Because when we sit down to Ambassador, see that we are always doing... Yes, sir. Ambassador Maina. Yes, sir. If I can interject here, what, what is the good thing that is happening in Nigeria? What good thing Everywhere. is Everywhere. I am not talking no, what, about no, what Nigeria. Good, no, I'm, I'm talking about an globally. Example. I am, I am asking. not talking about globally. Dr. Matsanga. Yes. Okay, let me tell you. Yes, tell me. How many presidents was in Nigeria? Several. More than 10 different, huh? several. Anytime yes. when there is a new president, people was complain. I don't know, I don't know if you remember, there is a time when good luck was the president in Nigeria. A whole pastor come out in the church, he said, good luck, the president, good luck of Nigeria is a bad luck for the country. Yes or not? He said yeah. it openly. The whole world, you can go to see the video. We, Africa, we are expecting more than what these people Dr. can Masanga do. Dr. Masanga is it, asking you, what is good in Nigeria? I am coming. I am not here for detail. If you are asking me for detail, me, I'm not Mr. Detail. I'm just telling you, if, if you don't see the good things in life, you will never see it. But you have to appreciate this life and to see where you are, where we want to go. <laughs> if you say that is not good. Huh? What we are yeah, expecting is, cannot go because there is no magic in this world. We, we have we to are go, not seeing, we are asking steps. terrors. No, but now we are asking magic. We can't see. How you are, how, how huh? come on, come on guys. Let us not blind ourselves to just to wake up to spell all our time oh, to oh, say no, this no. is not good, this is not uh, good. Dr. Mahina, Dr. So Dr. Give Mahina, me, give, Dr. Mahina, me what on your this, own no wait. With due respect, right. my okay. question is very simple. One, two, three. Name the good things that Africa has achieved. We are not quarreling with you. Yes. We just we want are not to... here to quarrel and we are giving yeah. ideas. Yes, if, tell us. Dr. Matanga, you know is... where we was in 1960s and where we are today in 2021. Yes. Yes. There is a lot of progress has made today. There is yes. a lot of awareness. There is a yes. lot of things. Huh? There is yes. a lot of awareness today. Africans are really aware that the things that's going on before there was not this kind of awareness, Dr. Matanga. But we cannot, we want a magic baguette done to change things. It will never happen, Dr. Matanga. If we want today to be, to have the, the, the kind of development, the kind of life, this Western country, we envy them today. It's going to take us minimum 50 to 100 years, either we like it or not. 
is it did not take them also 50 years it take them hundreds of years so to be where short, they are today in short you are saying i can okay. help you here in short you uh -huh. are saying for development it takes long time to evolve evolution democracy in yeah. europe has evolved that's okay that's fine that's what I all those but dr yeah. matsanga all the bad things we are claiming in africa you know europe has had more than worse barbaries in this world than africa i know you know and i know that thank you dr matsanga why now we are thinking that we are the worst was generation in this I world. am a moderator people, I am a balancing day people, yes I'm people been uh, another continent has been of the same life we've been today but they get out because they decide to take awareness and to move okay. to the next level this it's is what China. we need to I'm do in Africa. Africa yes Take yes, one country let's go back to Chad where you come from okay what good thing have they done instead of slaughtering the president thank you so much if you, you no, went no, no, to chat no. answer. since two what is there no, I'm, I'm giving you an answer yes go i'm ahead. giving you an answer dr matsanga slaughtering is just a one person right yes thank you now what i'm saying look at chat in 2000 first don't go far away you say from 2000 2021 there is a lot of progress chat has made the awareness even charging to understand even who they are, what is their right, what they want, what they don't want. It's, it's just the last few years before the country was always fighting. There was in war, there was not those kind of privilege. You see that any country who have a background or those kind of life, it will take you time to come out of it. That's why I said earlier, Dr. Masanga, you can take the person out of the ghetto. You will never take the ghetto out of it just easily. The mind have to be transformed. How many African people, you know them, they go to live in Europe. How many years of America, they come back bogus. They don't have nothing to offer to Africa. How many, you know, because the mind is not working. You can take them to Singapore. When you put them, they will come back bogus. They don't have nothing to offer us in Africa. Life so is a mental transformation. How do we Thank you so much. This is the question. The moment you ask a question, you will get an answer. If we agree today that we have come far away in Africa, that's where we was, that's where we are today. We will have now a new set of strategy, how we can move forward. Mistake has been done, we cannot change them. Our leaders, me, I can tell you today, any leaders in Africa, Dr. Matsanga, he cannot give you more than what he have, right or wrong. That is their level of thinking, their level of understanding and their level of leadership. They don't have more than that, they don't have more to offer us we are witnessing today some leaders who came last time i was in your platform you said that the six year john Magufuli had done in uh, in tanzania it's combined the whole uh other head of state they never realized what he realized because what he had in his mind was seen big but the other was not having this one since independence compared to to Magufuli tenure whatever realization they did in six years he did it right or wrong dr matanga yeah. thank you so every human in this life have the level of mind and understanding that he can give to his people some people don't have it it's not because we call them head of state no dr matanga they think like me and you if they don't have nothing to offer they will never offer you nothing we will keep fighting them Mm -hmm. like you are asking somebody who's never drive a car you tell him take this plane and you are very stupid how you don't know how to pilot how you don't know how to take this airbus 380 you still creaming on him he never been to school even to drive a car you are asking him to drive a jumbo jet dr matanga those are the okay. thing was happening in africa the progress if we don't agree today we are make progress in africa even we we are not fair with ourselves dr matanga if really we say it on the platform as Africa, no, we need to agree. Now, my question back to you as a moderator, Dr. If I ask you to ask the panel today uh, from to, to rate the Africa on percentage, what is the percentage we have done today on progress from the independence up to today, Dr. Masanga? I, the question is back to you. Thank you very much. What Can you give me a percentage? What is the yes. percentage in the terms from independence of progress today. Africa has of made? Progress. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I think Tawish, pick it from there. What percentage do we have? Negative? Oh. Positive? Take it away. Tawish? 
Java ni Karanja. Yes, Dr. David Matsanga. Oh, well, uh, thank the you show. so much, oh, uh, Dr. David. I would like to say that uh, the, the, the percentage, uh, the question that Ghana Miner has uh, uh, thrown to us, I think for me, I'll give it around uh, 40%. Uh, 40% in terms of uh, maybe infrastructure development, in terms of uh, uh, literacy level, but not much uh, uh, than that because still we are not in the right direction in terms of uh, the leadership and and i think that is where we have the biggest uh, challenge and uh, to me i'll say that when you see a bad leader in position it means that the people who elected him are well represented therefore the issue of bad leadership is us the voters is us who elect these leaders who have the problem because we keep electing them we keep are massaging them, we keep glorifying them, we keep glorifying bad leadership to a point where we have made it look normal that bad leadership is something that to be uh, uh, to, to be uh, uh, celebrated rather than to be condemned. Therefore, we Africans, we have the problem. Africa as a continent, as a large without the Africans, uh, it, it is a good it's a good continent. But we Africans, we are, we are the problem. We need to change our mindset. We need to change how we do our things and we need to first ensure that we have good leaders in, in in position of leadership so that we can be able to move to the next level and to ensure that we have enlightened people who know their right who know what they want who know where we are heading and who can also come and offer solutions when they are called uh, uh, upon therefore that is the kind of africa that i want to see in future but as we speak Yes, we are heading on the right direction, but a lot need to be done. A lot need to be done to take Africa to where uh, it, it's supposed to be. Therefore, uh, on that, uh, uh, the remaining 60%, according to me, is the best thing. The best thing to do is to ensure that we have enlightened and empowered uh, people who can move to the right direction. Also, when you look at Africa, we have the we have uh, it's a vast, rich in minerals. We have the most beautiful and arable lad to do agriculture but look at us now we are people who are suffering economically we are not doing better and we have all, all what it takes to take to make africa an economic giant therefore when you look at all these issues you see that africa is a sleeping giant and when we will wake up others will have a reason to be uh, uh, worried because we are great it only takes the coordination and the leadership and people, enlightened citizens, who will be able to work to make these things move, to ensure that we have industries, to ensure that we have we, we modify our agriculture, to ensure that we have we create job to young people, and we create job through e e industrialization. When you look at the countries who who moved from third class to second class to first class world, they they they, they embraced in, in industrialization and a, a modern agriculture therefore we need to, to do to go that way to ensure that our young people have uh, 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 employed also to ensure that in other places in africa in remotest areas of africa we have people who have, have no access to good education we ensure that we write and all these people so that they can know on their uh, on on their rights so that they can know what needs to be done better to take africa to the next level therefore th those are some of things that need to be done and uh, upon that also in our curriculums, we need to enlighten Africans on the need to embrace the Africanness in us, in the need to ensure that we see Africa as great. We, we stop seeing ourselves as inferior. We need now to start rejuvenating the spirit of Africanness in us so that we can move to the next level. Because you see, even here in Africa, we have a perspective, a very retrogressive mindset that you need to get products from Europe you need to get products from Asia that products that are made in Africa are a product not to be embraced. They are of low standards. That is how we think. But when you look around, when you go around, you'll see that Africa produces the best. We have uh, in, in terms of uh, the clothing, the textiles, we have the best because we have the best material here. We have the best coffee. But look at us now. We take the third class coffee, but we export the first grade to Europe to be uh, refined and uh, to be reprocessed 
further, then we, we import it back. Why can't we have those industries in, 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 in our continent? Those are some of things where we fail. And that's where, why I blame the leadership and the people who put these leaders into position or, or, or into the position of leadership. Therefore, as we celebrate the Africa Day today, th there's nothing much to, to celebrate really, but we need to, to continue with the spirit of rekindling the spirit of Africanness that is in us. Our forefathers fought for independence. It is for us, the generation that we are, the young people of this African continent to fight for, uh, for, for, for development rather because we, we, we have the independence but when you look at us we don't look really independent to ensure that we are self-reliant the generation of today need to ensure that africa is self-reliant we can rely on ourselves in terms of economic mobility in terms of political uh, growth and in terms of social cohesion that is where we need to go as africa and that is the only way to ensure that we have a great africa where all of us can feel home when you look at it now because of unemployment because of all these issues. Most young people think that migrating to uh, Europe, migrating to Western countries, that is where they, they, they get the greener uh, pastures. But we can still have the greenest pasture in Africa if we put all the resources together, if we work together and we take our continent to the next level. Thank you. I beg to submit Dr. Masanga and my fellow panelists. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. You have actually come out, and I think you seem to be going on the side of, of Ambassador Maina. And uh, a bit of it, challenges, obstacles, success. Kawish, before I come for second round now, prepare for one minute each as we close down. Thank you, Kawish. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. David and my colleague panelists. Did I have to apologize? I had some network hitch on my end, but I think now it's uh, stable and restored. Uh, I thought just to respond uh, quickly on the question you've asked about uh, the dream of Africa and where we are today. I think it is time that we need to be very honest because one step towards actually achieving the bigger dream, the bigger vision that Africa has, it is to be it begins with actually speaking the truth and where exactly is Africa today. Uh, compared to the vision and the dream that our forefathers had about the continent of Africa. It is true, Dr. Masanga, that we may have been trying to make some strides uh, to try and change uh, Africa, to try and modernize Africa, to try and make Africa maybe look like what Singapore is today, to try and make Africa uh, look like what America is today, or to try and make Africa what, for example, um, the, the Indian nations, for example, are today, Dr. Masanga, but I will say confidently and without uh, any uh, fear uh, that we are still lagging behind. Is there's still a long way uh, for Africa to go, actually, to make those uh, dreams and aspirations to be realized, uh, simply because of the reasons that uh, my panelists who spoke ahead of me, of course, have highlighted, and there's absolutely no need for me to try and revisit. Some of the panelists here have talked about the question of why we continue uh, actually to be defined, or we've made ourselves um, we've made ourselves to be a, a hallmark of, or to, to be identified rather with a hallmark of poverty as a continent of Africa. When we have a fertile soils, when we have a good climate uh, that is favorable to do farming, for example, why is it that the people of Africa mostly today continue to languish in, uh, of course, in poverty? Why is it that we continue to uh, languish in hunger, Dr. Masanga? What does it? What is it that we are not doing right as a continent, as a people, or even as our as the leaders? What is it that they are do, not doing right that our people continue really uh, to stay hungry when we have enough really to even cultivate uh, for our own consumption and even for export, Dr. Masanga? Dr. Masanga, we have made ourselves to be defined by the fighting amongst ourselves uh, today in our continent of Africa, and that has remained our definition for for far too long. I'm very sure because again, some of the panelists here have mentioned. The likes of Julius Nyerere, they've mentioned the likes of, uh, of course, Jomo Kenyatta, the likes of uh, other leaders on the continent of Africa, really, who worked very hard and even envisioned the dream and aspiration of the African continent. Uh, maybe if I should uh, take the example of the just latest leader who left us in Tanzania, uh, that is John Pombe Magufuli. I'm sure he must, have, he must be having a conversation uh, from wherever he is, actually telling the other leaders who are there before him, who actually left this uh, planet, who are promoted to glory ahead of him. He's trying to tell them exactly what the continent looks like in Africa today. He's trying to tell them how 
uh, people are fighting amongst themselves in the continent of Africa. That is the definition that we had, Dr. Masanga. And up until we start talking and rebuking, reprimanding these kind of vices amidst us, that is when we cannot actually change Dr. Masanga. So we need to begin talking about this conversation and reprimanding those who are trying to pull us back as a people, Dr. Masanga. We continue, Dr. Masanga, to make corruption a normal business amongst ourselves. Almost every country today, Dr. Masanga, in Africa, there is a story about corruption. And not corruption in small, in small measures, Dr. Masanga. Small uh, corruption in big measures, Dr. Masanga, something that has compromised service delivery to our people. It has compromised, for example, um, the quest to uplift the living standards of our people, Dr. Masanga. So what are we speaking about? We are speaking about our priorities, which are upside down. And actually, the biggest challenge and setback in all this is that the people at the forefront doing this is our very own leaders, leave alone the ordinary people, Dr. Masanga. Today, we continue to be defined more by, by our disunity, uh, more than it should have been by our unity, Dr. Masanga. Look at what is happening, for example, in Somalia, the infighting in Somalia itself, the fighting between Somalia and other nations. Look at what is happening in Central Africa Republic. Look at how what is happening in South Sudan. Look at what is happening in DR Congo. You've mentioned about Mali. The examples are numerous. I can continue to list them, Dr. Masanga, and maybe it, it may turn out to be endless. Look at what is happening in Nigeria today. The indigenous people of Biafra, they continue to ask for a referendum and President uh, Paul Bia cannot allow, President Muhammad Buhari cannot allow it. Look at what is happening in Cameroon, Dr. Masanga, today. The people of Ambazonia want their own independence and President uh, Paul Bia cannot allow it, Dr. Masanga. The examples are endless, Dr. Masanga. So we continue to be defined by that. We continue to be defined by that aspect of disunity amongst ourselves. At a time when we should have made progress and uh, strides in as far as the unity question is concerned, Dr. Masanga. Look at the merciless massacres of our people, Dr. Masanga, in various countries today in the continent of Africa. And it doesn't bother us at all. It doesn't bother the African Union. It doesn't bother the East, East Africa community. It doesn't bother Dr. Masanga, the SADAC. It doesn't bother the United Nations Security Council uh, that our people continue to die mercilessly because we are not doing so much and we are not giving a keen eye. But moving forward, Dr. Masanga, nonetheless, we must have a solution. Can we then say it is time for us to surrender? Can we call it a day? No, Dr. Masanga. I think the no retreat, no surrender should be the clarion call. That much as we continue to face these challenges, much as we continue to face these setbacks as a continent, there's still hope at the end of the tunnel. We must therefore strive uh, to change the narrative and the negative perspective about the continent of Africa. And that perspective and change can only begin with you and me, Dr. Masanga, taking action. I submit, Dr. Masanga. Very well. Dr. Masanga, do I proceed to talk? He finds me talking. Maybe I can pilot for uh, I can pilot for a little while. Um, I mean, we've made already uh, the first round, like Dr. Masanga has, had said earlier. Uh, Professor Nyari, yeah, now Dr. Masanga had said, maybe every of our panelists can have a minute actually to give um, the last submission before we wind up the program. Maybe I can begin with you, Professor uh, Onyari. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I hope Ambassador Maina is here to hear this. When you get a topic like this, a, a fair few of you have passed this topic because the topic was simple, the perspective of the African day. Have we lived the dream? So when you come here to tell us that there's a lot of progress, we 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 we, we don't take it kind. But let me just say that the the, the founders, the African leaders, were committed to bring about changes, freedom to Africa countries. That was what they were said. They were to restore the dignity of the African people. They were to bring unity to the continent. They were to bring political and economic emancipation of its people. Those were the agenda. Now we want to see how they achieved. According to Ambassador Maina and the Chavan and others, they have said there is progress. Yes, there is progress in the continent of Africa. When there's lack of unity and cohesion, is that what you call progress? When there's pervasive influence of the colonial powers, like what France does to African countries, you call that one progress. When there's authoritative regimes in the continent of Africa, you call that one progress. 
when there is a military and political leaders, the likes of Museven, the likes of Kagame, you call it progress, who enter power and they don't want to exit. When there's the, there's a lot of chronic unemployment in the continent of Africa, how are you going to get our people so that you empower them economically? You call it progress. When we have got all civil wars, South and Sudan, and many other the Democratic Republic of Congo, you call it progress. When there is population explosion, you call it progress with no plan on how we are moving forward. When there is a disease, see how prepared we were with the corona pandemic, you call it that one progress and I'm finishing. When we have drought in the continent of Africa, and when we want to build dams like Marara and Arara Dam and someone takes the 21 billion and you call it progress, so Africa would have mass on Africa. When there's corruption and mismanagement of public resources, you call it progress. When there's lack of respect of human rights, you call it progress. Is that what the founding fathers wanted? When there's the absence of rule of law and democracy in the continent of Africa, you saw what this friend of ours from Somalia wanted to do. You extend when there's the outright rigging of direction and people call it progress. When there's poor governance in the continent of Africa, others who want to call it progress. When there's a lack of inclusivity, other people are isolated, people call it progress. When there is a total opaqueness from our leaders, they are never transparent, you call it progress. When they are not accountable to us, we call it progress. When the African leaders are irresponsible, you call it progress. Let me just end up by saying, and the Nyanjama will bear me to be a witness on this, even you, uh, Tawis. A man went to the river, normal, you know, we grew up betting on the river. You simply go there and you remove your clothes. You start, you start bathing. And a madman comes and he looks at you and he comes <laughs> and he grabs, <laughs> grabs your clothes and you start chasing him. Now, <laughs> who is a madman now? This is exactly what the likes of Ghana might have done. The, the white has run away to Europe with the cross and we are following him. We must redeem Africa. We must live the dreams of the founding fathers. We must have an agenda. They were committed to have peace and security. Do you see peace and security in the continent of Africa? The wish I will go on and on and I've gone beyond one minute. I get agitated when we don't live the we don't live the ideals of the founding fathers of our nations. But no, let us not lose hope. We are having an engagement. We are having a conversation. We are having a discussion. We are having a debate. We shall have uh, we shall have uh, we shall have, uh, we shall have uh, a, a solution or an answer. Let me tell you, for those who are hearing me, refuse to give up. Stay in the struggle. Hand the pattern of, of, of hand the pattern of struggle to the next generation. Let us tell our children, this is not what our founding fathers wanted us to do. They wanted to see one united Africa. Kwame Nkrumah, I submit. Oh, very well. Uh, thank you, thank sir, you very so much. much, Professor Onyari. Oh, Dr. Masanga is back. Uh, indeed, I can hand over he to him now. Dr. Well, Masanga, over to you. You so give it a guess to summarize. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tawish. Okay. Go very ahead. well. Thank you so much, Dr. Masanga, for that latitude. Let me now have, um, of course, uh, most a favor before I get to Kirimi and Karanja. Uh, most favor, if you can make your um, last perspective on the program you've had tonight. Okay. Thank you very much for giving me the second time to hear my opinion. Thank you. I, I want to also appreciate all the all the speakers for having done a marvelous work. But I want to start with the question that was asked and the answer that was given by one of the, uh, the ambassador, the comrade. He said that uh, he can rate African 40%. I must say that uh, in my own perspective, uh, we always believe that if you want to solve a problem, just be sincere to yourself. Now, Rating African 40%, if African is of 40% rate in, 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 in the endeavor, I don't think we'll be having this very conference or this meeting because at least 40% is not too bad. But I must tell you that let's just take a little, let's just pair some countries that also got independent in the lines of African countries. For instance, the, the, the revolution of Chinese uh, Communist Party that was led by Mozambique in 1949 declared independent of china in 1949 take take the take a, a note of the year 1949 india got independent 1947 if i'm not mistaken 
the state of Israel was declared independent in 19, sovereign state of Israel in 1948. So now, just these are not American countries, these are not Europe, but these are Asia. Asia country, India, can you compare any, any a country in Africa with the development and the level India has attained at this very between considering the time these countries got independent. Singapore that we've been mentioning that got their own in 1965. What do we have in Africa to say that we have 40 percent? Maybe at least I've been to I've traveled to so many other African countries, but I don't know these countries in Africa that have attained 40 percent. Case study of Nigeria, there is no running water. Where is the 40%? There is no electricity in Nigeria as we speak. Where is the 40%? There is no good road in Nigeria as we speak. Where is the 40%? There is no Wi-Fi, nothing. There is absolutely nothing. No amenities. Schools are on strike. Where is the 40%? Doctors are on strike in Nigeria. Where is the 40%? We are, that is just one thing, something I want to know the level of the what we've achieved so far. In in other countries of the world, they are talking about technology, but in Nigeria, they are talking of cows. Hence, men, they, it's just a national issue, national discourse. They are talking about cow. Now, the latest one that they raised in the house of their senate was to give a database to cow when a human being don't have a database in Nigeria. This is the news. So I want to understand where the 40% is coming from. But I will conclude by saying this, that we are not here to, to just complain and lament. That is why my leader, Mazen Nam Dekano, has chosen the path of freedom for indigenous people of Biafra. Because we've, we have seen that as the root cause of the problem, that they merged us, they joined us with the people we have no ideological similarities with. These people, the, the Nigeria today, the three people that makes up Nigeria, they are two, three different people. The ideology that it, it didn't match. On the, on the end, even, as out of independent, one of the pioneers of Nigeria then said that this new nation called Nigeria is more like oil and water coming together, which means that from the very creation, they know that this thing is, will not work. It cannot work. That is why my leader, Mazen Nam Dekano, has seen the problem, knowing fully well that Nigeria or is more like what Africa looks up to because the population is huge. So that is why I believe that if Af Biafra is restored today, Africa will be free because Africans just need their country to set an example so others will follow. But for now, at the moment, there is no nation to look up to in Africa. But Biafra is coming and Biafra will be restored and African dignity, the dignity of black man and, and, and will be proud again to be Africans. That's my part. Thank you. Uh, wow. Thank you so much, uh, Most Fema. I think you've made uh, your point and uh, the clarion call here is that uh, we must remain focused and uh, more importantly is that uh, the quest to change Africa um, is not about an event, it is more of a process. It's something that we need to commit continually uh, so that we can achieve uh, the dream that was for the African uh, continent. Let me now have this opportunity for one Javan Karanja coming on the way from Nanyuki to make his final remarks on this program tonight. Javan Karanja, please. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Maybe if I can have uh, Douglas Kirini. Yeah, uh, thank you, Tawish. Okay, Douglas thank Kirini, you. take it away. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tawish. One thing we need to be able to get right as the people of Africa is the issue of readership in Africa. These re readers in Africa are sustained by people. Despots like uh, Mohamed Faramajo in uh, Somalia are sustained by people, by a cabal of readers who continue sharing these people. Despots like uh, Muhammad Buhari of uh, Nigeria are maintained and sustained by people at Asorok. People who cannot be able to help the people of Nigeria. Furani men are running the country like a showground. And also people are like uh, Paul Beer in uh, Cameroon are not doing that alone. They are being helped in power and everywhere in Africa. We need to be able to do that because we cannot compete with the world, with outside the world, with the Africa that we have today, with the same kind of leadership that we have. And because my one minute is over, the core issue that we have in Africa as we celebrate the Africa Day 
uh, is the African day, is the issue of leadership. If we can correct the, 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 the fish that is rotten from the head, we can be able to save the stomach and we can be able to, sort, uh, to, to, to save the tail of the African uh, soul. Because the soul of Africa is at stake. The fight for the soul of Africa is at, um, a, a, at a climax and we need to be able to save ourselves and save the soul of Africa. I submit and thank you, Dr. Masanga, for having me on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much, my dear brother. Thank you very much, Douglas Kremi. Yes, Ghana Marina. Then I hand it back to Tawish. Let's do that, Tawish, all the time, so that okay. I don't talk too much. Dr. Masanga, thank you so much. Uh, we are saying today is an African day. Everybody agree with me. And you see, uh, mankind always grow with the struggle. You cannot grow just and easily on the golden plate. We Africa, we, we don't want to struggle. We have to struggle, Dr. Matsanga. The topic of today, Dr. Masanga is asking, are we living a dream? Am I right? Do we have a dream? Am I asking? This is the question. May ask Professor Nyari, the dream is only where you are sleeping. You cannot live in when you are, you are, you are wake up. <laughs> of course, you say dream. If someone is dreaming, he's sleeping, Dr. Matsanga. Hmm? In this case, we mean a dream of Kwame Kuma. But of a United it's only Africa. a dream. Is only a dream. You know, when you talk about the dream, we have to talk about the action and the consistency to arrive at the result. I, I, I think, Maina, those days, Maina, we Maina, talk, Maina, right? Maina, okay. your, your stay in France has also spoiled you. Mm. Okay. Maina, yes, Ambassador, your excellence. We are talking you. about dream. Dream is only when you are sleeping. A dream um, of a future, yeah. of a vision. Is English connotation, unfortunately. We are talking dream. Dream is when someone no, is sleeping. You say, I dream you yesterday. Are assimilated. You are assimilated by the French. You don't understand what a dream is. A okay, dream what is a dream, is Dr. Dream Dr. Matanga? Of what will come. Okay, <laughs> we are talking dream. only. Please don't, okay, talking, don't yes. translate it in French. We are talking, yes. Now, how about the action? How about uh -huh. the consistency? Yes. That is better. That is better. The question what I'm asking: If you say take? when you are when you when you people are telling dream dream, we only get it when we are sleeping. <laughs> oh my God! My right? <laughs> you know, Maina. I think that there is something. Do you eat it's frogs, uh, Doctor? Yeah, is well, you know, when we talk about a dream, I think it doesn't have to be taken. Maina, scora or dream. what? No, no, you know, Maina. Do you eat frogs? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Uh, no, my, no, no. Maina, answer me. Do you eat, do you eat don't frogs? confuse, don't confuse the dream with a nightmare, Doctor Maina. No, there's a difference <laughs> but even in a nightmare. A nightmare only has coming when you are sleeping. Oh my God! I think this is a French assimilation. This man has been assimilated. Now, now, let's French. go back now. When yes. we talk about you have been assimilated, but by we the never French put action, action on it, right? Yes. And let him put Normally, let him put we, as we all of the the video, Masa, Can I finish my one minute, please? We you want to are using my one minute. In fact, in fact you, we have two minutes. We have one, two minutes for you. Just listen to your okay. dream now. Or now. nightmare. <laughs> if you see a country has been developed not because they have dream, but because they pay a lot of price, but they decide to change that they don't want it this kind of bad things happen to them all the developed countries we need to agree on that first now in africa we just said talk about dreams yes but now after dream what is the next line of action is action right after the action is consistency make sure that we will move on am i right or wrong dr matsanga you are right but now we who are african today our generation we don't have to talk about dream now we have to now, talk about put, action let's can you put your let's, can you put your suggestion on how we move on? We called you okay. for a conference. I, I always we called you for I a always... conference. We gave you an invitation a few weeks ago. You did not even appear. You I did, did not, not receive any give... email. No, 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 so no, no. If someone here, yeah, Dr. You Masanga, you connect appear. me with. So I am I am a responsible person. If you connect me with somebody who get my information, didn't send me email, no, me, then I, I'm not I welcome. I did it myself. I did no, I did not receive any and I email. I'm sorry. I am a very responsible person. No, yeah, I did not receive any email. I'm sorry, I did not receive anything. Then we can join each other here. 
If you want I to have not me, received any email. Manner. Yes, you the, did your not. Your office supposed to send me email for the confirmation. Okay. The person even said that I will send you an email. And there the person has not done it. There is a conference on Friday. Send me it's an not, email for the confirmation. Yeah, I will be there. Are, now, let I'm me sending please. it 200 times on your WhatsApp. And then you please, let me finish my two minutes now. Yes, go ahead. Let us sit down to draw a map that where we are today and where we want to be and what is the price we are ready to pay. If we all agree that we will have the step forward. Yes. I'm uh, asking the, my brother professor that we have to stop blaming. Now we have to start going to the action. If you, if you take out the blame game, you will find out where is we are getting wrong. Let me explain to you uh, the problem of this uh, Fulani Hellsman has started in my country in Chad. Do you know what is the root cause of the problem, Dr. Matanga? No. Let me tell you today. Here. Thank you. There is, before 1960, there is a corridor, they call it transhuman corridor, drove from Libya going to Ivory Coast. The space wider of almost uh, 72 kilometers that this space cannot be occupied in any country because the has the headsman you know will travel along the equatorial line crossing cameroon going to nigeria all those countries when the population has grew with growing the mistake a lot of countries has made in their constitution they did not take you know eye on this one to make sure that if this thing can be respected or they have to wipe it out so it becomes a lot of tension Sometimes many, the more population are growing, the more people need to do an agriculture. So they always using this land and those people also will entering with their cattle and always they will fight and killing each other that the government cannot find the solution. Chad was almost the first country to pay the heavy price on this. You see, Hesman, Chad has paid a biggest price. So until now, if we did not find a solution to make sure that we fix those things, we will start blaming each other every time. You know, blaming cannot bring us to a solution. We need to know what is the root cause of that. We have to find out that these people, they are scattered. Are we going to find a special area demarcated that anybody who go out of this area at least have violated our constitution? That's what at least now we know where we are going. But this thing now has been messed up, Dr. Masanga. A lot of things has happening. You know, the more we are going in problem, the more the problem becoming deeper, the more it becoming complicated to solve in our life. Right? I'm telling you the story in my country, what I know. People pay, okay. families pay heavy prices, Dr. Masanga, with killing. Okay. Heavy prices, you know, in charge. More than okay. 10 million people die from 1960 yes, from, up to today. Yes, from Hussein Habre up to today. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Masanga. I, I want to thank you so much. So for us, Africa today, we need to agree where we are and we need to plan how we are going forward. Thank you, Professor yes. Jare. Thank you very much. It looks like uh, Professor Onyari and uh, uh, Ambassador Maina, if we put them together in the house, we can find a very good solution <laughs> of Africa <laughs> because they, it, they light up our shows. But thank you very much. Who has not spoken now? Uh, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Joseph Nyanchama, can you please let have Dr. Joseph Nyanchama? Yes, Dr. Thank Joseph Nyanchama. Yeah, thank sure. you very, thank you very much, my fellow panelists. Have uh, listened to the insight even from mine. The country where he is, allow me, Dr. Masanga, to begin from there. And this thing I never get tired of saying, President Chakis Chirak. 2008, he said and stood before the world that let us be honest, my French people, all of the monies, majority of it in the banks, have been looted from Africa. Why I started speaking about leadership is the leaders of Africa, we gave them the resources and the money to be the steward, but they colluded with an external enemy and they looted our resources. In fact, this idea of Girac gave an illuminating insight on why Africa has been touted as the poverty capital of the world. But because, as even Mina said, that we do not want to continue complaining, for me, may the dreams come back both to the youth 
and the old. Because as a Christian in the book of Joel chapter 2, verse 28 up to 29, it clearly says, God says that I shall bring the Holy Spirit. The young sons and daughters shall profess, shall prophesy. The old people shall dream dreams and the young people shall see visions. For me, the appeal to Africa now is to begin the journey, although late. And the one aspect I need to recommend, we have a lot of resources, I've already said, 60% of Africa, 60% of the world Arab land is in Africa. Yes. Let us begin the dream now and let us not continue to complain day in, day out. I spoke about leadership and I want to tell you without fear or contradiction, my fellow panelists, no organization, no country can go beyond the vision of a leader. That's why leadership is very critical. Even Martin Luther Jr. dreamed to end, you know what he said? When he was reading from a script, a vision came to him. You know, he was a very peaceful man. He embraced the peace. And he said these words, he said that even if we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream, a dream rooted deeply in the American dream that the sons of the slaves and the sons of the slave owners shall live together one day under the table of brotherhood. And the more personally, I have a dream that my four little children will live in a country, a country where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, by, by the content of their character. Having said this, Dr. Masanga, I want to say that let us give opportunity for African young generation to begin to dream like this young man who dreamed. And you know, he died at the age of 39, but he still has a dream. So young generations in Africa, we still have dream. We still have opportunity to dream. Let us start to reconstruct Africa. It is not all lost. Dr. Masanga, I submit and wish with night for my fellow panelists. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, very, thank you very much, my panel. Thank you very much, Ambassador Gaina Maina from Paris, the headquarters of imperialism in the world, neocolonialists who come to bring war in Africa. Thank you very much, my brother, most favor on Gibo from the Netherlands. Thank you very much, Professor Gerard Onyag. Tawish Samuel Olesesana, Douglas Kirimi Kirimi, and Javani Karanja, and all thousands and thousands of viewers, those people in Biafra, the suffering lot in Biafra, my people who suffer in Biafra on a daily basis, I want to tell you there is hope. When Nkrumah said, there will come a time when Africa will unite. One day Africa will unite. When Sekutura said so, when Selassie, Iselassie, Emperor Iselassie, when Obote said so, Nyerere, Jomo Kenyatta, Mondaleni, Benibera, Amir Cabral, Gabriel Nas, all these men were serious, genuine Pan Africans. Today, we watch the countries like Nigeria falling to pieces. I agree with most favor on Ibuko that there is nothing in Nigeria that can make you happy. What is it? Not even internet, not even fuel at a petrol station. A country that produces fuel, crude oil, has no kerosene at a petrol station. 
what development does Maina talk about of 40 percent? Today, most of the African continents are agitating to change the constitution, <coughs> especially in Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi. People in Konakure, Gini Konakure, Mali, Sudan, South Sudan, Somalia, people are changing Ivory Coast. Presidents are changing constitutions. Not the one in Kenya, no. Kenya is not changing the constitution to stay in power. Kenya is changing the constitution to have a free and a fair election. But the truth comes that some other countries have changed the power, a constitution to stay in power. Is that the Africa we want? The people of Nigeria, the people of Biafra want a referendum. The only way and the destiny for the people of Nigeria, of, of Biafra, is a referendum. Give them a referendum. Does Nigeria need rearrangement? Yes. Maina has talked of 70 kilometers wide of the Flani plateau which runs all the way from up Mali through the Sahara region, delivers the cows, the goats, the cattle. But is this the way to kill others? The Fulani herdsmen have become killers. They kill people. They maim people. The state of Nigeria has fallen to peace. Boko Haram is killing people abductions, people are being slaughtered. Is this the Africa we want? Is this the dream that Nkrumah wanted? The answer is no. I therefore thank all of you for having participated in this discussion. Tawish, thank you very much for having joined in as my co-host. And I thank you very much to watch all the time at any time that you feel like I am getting tired, just come in. I am an old horse, a horse that has done my years on earth. But I want to leave a legacy of a united Africa. I want to try to integrate Africa. From the horizons of Lake Victoria up to the horizons of Indian Ocean, to the horizons of Atlantic Ocean, I want to see a united Africa. But can Africa unite with the Biafrans being killed on everyday basis? Can Africa unite when people in Abazonia live under slavery of a 42-year-old leadership of Paul Robia and the wife? Can Africa unite when Libya is facing the problem that we see after the killing of Gaddafi by the um, French instigated mercenaries that killed Gaddafi. Was Libya begging food? Was Libya begging food? Or was Libya giving us food instead? See what we have done to Libya. Africa can only be free if Zimbabwe sanctions are removed for the people of Zimbabwe to sell their diamonds, whatever they want, in order to make a living to buy medicines for their people. That's a case we cannot bargain about. Therefore, Africa, one day, will rise and shine again. Gentlemen, I invite you to the African Pan-African Forum Conference that will be moderated by Professor Onyari, Dr. Joseph Nyanchama, Olesasana Tawish, Douglas Kirimi, Karanja, Dr. David Matsanga, Miriam Ogutu on Friday, starting from 9 o'clock 
to about 12 o'clock, three hours for East African region. This time we are doing what we call seminars, an in-house seminar. The question that we have, you can join in anybody. There is also space for North West Africa next week. But this time, slowly, slowly, we are building bridges towards a bridge by bridge we make Africa united. Our topic on that day is African Union dead. <laughs> I don't know what my comrade Nyachama will say. Is it dead? So think about those areas. Do we have African Union anyway? Is it dead? Where is it? Do you see, feel it? Or you see on the flag and during elections, some few observers sent wearing African Union flag? Is it dead? In fact, if I should put it, if I, if I should put it on the flip side, I think the question should be, is it alive? <laughs> is it alive? Because we, we really wonder whether it is even existing. That, that is, that is now you are already writing your paper. <laughs> okay. I am an, I am an examiner. I write the papers. I have written a question. Is it there? Mm -hmm. So you answering my question as an examiner, is it alive? You can ask me that and I keep you marked. Doctor knows, professor knows, you know it yourself. Is it dead? Imekufa. I am doing it African way. Is African Union Imekufa? Bado we go in. So thank you very much, viewers. Keep yourself safe. Wash your hands. Keep a distance. Wear your masks when you go out in the public. Take your vaccination. A country like Europe cannot be, like Britain, cannot be stupid to vaccinate 100 million people. Then you say you are an African in a poor place in my mountains that you are not running away from vaccination. You are very stupid. You hear me? Have you heard me? You must be a very stupid person. So, can Britain kill its 100 million people after giving them a vaccination? Please, time is coming when you will need this vaccine and it will not be there. The films that we see in Netflix, is it Netflix? What is it called? Is it called Netflix? The film is that we see a disease Net, killing Net, everybody. Net, Netflix. Netflix, whatever it is. Because those, those are some of the things for you junior men, uh, younger guys playing about with children. I don't have grandchildren where I am now. My grandchildren are very far from me. So you are able to know those things. These things are coming true now. The disease, have you seen people running to a ship to escape the disease? So don't reach, wait for that moment when the medicine is not available. Take the chance. In Uganda, the Minister of Health is crying for people to come and take the vaccine. They are returning all vaccines from the hospital, from clinics. And the minister is saying, please, you people will die. So if something in July comes up of the Indian variant, Variant, we are done, we are dead, we are finished. So keep Mr. Most, most favor on Igubo. Thank you very much, my brother, for attending and keep attending Punchline Africa shows wherever you are in Netherlands, in The Hague. When I come over to Amsterdam, I'll look out for you. Thank you very much for attending my show this evening. The studio also back. In the communication center, my man, general manager, Stephen, thank you very much for keeping us working and connecting to the world. This station, therefore, is for Africa, by Africa.
with Africa. Ciao.